Hey, sorry to be away. Tap, 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 breaker, breaker. I got my little Mikey mic here, as usual. Um, thanks for tuning in again. I apologize for not recording uh, very often lately. I have been just so busy, super busy, and it's just there's so much going on in the world, uh, as if I need to tell you. So I apologize. Um, I also apologize if it seems like I'm speaking slowly because I I, t- I took a nap not long ago and I'm not I'm not super awake. But I have discovered a trick uh, that you that you can try for this video or any other uh, YouTube video you like. Um, I have been finding that sometimes. Um, I watch videos at 1.25 speed or 1.5 speed because especially with like psychic readings, you know, to relate, um, information to the viewers that the psychics, they have to take their time and, and do the readings. And, and sometimes, um, you can put it on 1.5 and it, and you can just absorb it faster and it, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. So if you want to put me on 1.5 or 1.75, I won't be offended. Uh, Because we all only have so much time in any day. So, wow, where to start? Um, Where to start? Well, okay, yeah, so this is personal, but, I mean, that's my channel, right? Um, So I had, uh, being a man of a certain age, I I got the first shingles vaccination shot last week, and it kicked my ass. I got it on Tuesday... And I had a music rehearsal Tuesday evening, and it wasn't really quite kicking in yet, but my arm hurt, and I was just waiting. And then, like, Wednesday and Thursday, I was tired, pooped, and even a bit into Friday, and a headache. So it was mostly fatigue and a headache. So um, if you were thinking of getting it, um, I, I found it personally to be a bit stronger than the uh, the COVID vaccinations, all three shots I've had. And I'm wondering if that's because it's an old school vaccine. Um, you know, it's not a, a new mRNA vaccine. And I feel like the old older vaccines maybe are more like, uh, it's kind of like comparing a shotgun blast to a, a pistol. Like a shotgun is a is big widespread so you're just like throwing everything you can at something. And that's kind of like the analogy for old vaccines. And then I feel like mRNA vaccines are so much more precise. And that's the way they describe what they do. That it's more like a bullet. It's a precision shot. So I feel like I got shot, <laughs> shotgun blast um, with the uh, shingles vaccine on Tuesday. And um, it set me back a little and then the week was just so dramatic anyway because of everything that's going on in the world that um and hearing watching the other psychics the psychics that I um you know watch regularly including Kim Carey um my friend Kim Carey um saying that they were feeling like fatigue and zapped and then I was thinking geez is it more like an energetic thing or is it is it uh you know is it the vaccine and then sometimes you can't tell so anyway, not that it matters a whole lot. So that's my um, sort of wandering setup here. Sorry. Um, I'd like to talk about a few dreams I had that were kind of interesting. Um, and also just about sort of where where I feel we're at with, with things in the world. Um, Ukraine is, is devastating. It is a humanitarian catastrophe. And... It feels particularly barbaric because the last century, the the 20th century on Earth was really all about these like, you know, nearly global ending wars. You know, there was fear after World War II and the and the and the rise of the atomic era that the Third World War would would be the last war because it would destroy the world. It would destroy civilization and I do believe what um, you know a lot of the psychics online um, are saying. Uh, Sterling, especially among them, saying that. Um, and it's amazing for me to say this because I, I never really bought into this stuff before, but I, I do now. I'm coming around. I do believe that there is probably extraterrestrial assistance at this time on Earth to prevent um, another nuclear disaster. 
um, from occurring, especially with Russia having, you know, bombed um, the Chernobyl site and, and maybe another reactor too. Um, you know, they're not, they didn't bomb like the reactors themselves, but they bombed a building close to it. So like they're flirting with, well, they're flirting with obvious danger, but they're also trying to, I think Putin is also trying to appear crazy so that he'll get what he wants. He thinks he can cow the world into submission with fear, which is a dictator's playbook. Um, as we all well know, fear, fear is what they use to keep people in check. And that playbook globally, like, and in just in terms of human evolution, that's part of what we're evolving past. I don't mean that people will never be afraid in the future. I just mean that those 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 illusions, those tricks, those um, you know, really is about as close to evil as you can get in a human being. And I hesitate to say outright like Putin's evil because it's so tempting. And, and the same with 45. But yet we know that they have souls. You know, they, it's just that the soul is so, is so pushed down, is so ignored, has been under so much, um, you know, they, they buried it so deep. It's, it's almost like it doesn't exist or it seems like it doesn't exist. Yet the, the test for us to some extent is to, recognize that a lot of what they're doing is evil yet still try to pray for them which is so hard yet the more you do it the easier it gets so you know god help me the last thing in the world i feel like doing some days is is praying for putin and 45 and i can hear you groaning out there um, but I'm doing it, um, you know, I'm, I'm praying just as much and definitely more for Ukraine and, and Zelensky and that, um, the Russian soldiers, um, not engage, not follow orders, um, that they, that they be peaceful. Um, yes, I feel like I'm trying to contribute my energy to, Peace in that region, just as many of the other people who, um, you know, uh, are in the spiritual com community and we consider ourselves light workers, you know, just in quotes, because it doesn't matter what you call us. We're, we're trying to do trying to do good in the world as much as we can um, and to believe that our prayers, our thoughts, which are our energy, as I always say. Um, will have an effect on the outcome. And I really believe that that is what manifestation is about to an extent. And I really believe that it um, it has an effect. I just see it. I see it every day in my life that that where my where my beliefs come from is where life, my life flows, flows, if that makes sense. I don't think that's grammatically very correct, but I hope you catch my meaning. So that like what we believe is what sur surrounds us or life reflects what we believe. And I'm, I'm sure I've said this before too, but um, film director David Lynch says, I think he's done Transcendental Meditation. I think that's his big thing. He said, he says, the world is as you are, Me, which I interpret to mean like what the world, your inner world is reflected in your outer world. And I, I think that most people, if they really, really sat and thought about it, would come to admit that their that their outer world, uh, what they're surrounded with in their daily life, does match their inner world. So um, that even some of our disappointments and some of our um, setbacks are part of um, what we're putting out into the world too. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, so Ukraine is just, it is just awful, awful, awful. And we thought, yes, we thought that the 20th century would be kind of like the end of these um, barbaric wars, yet the barbarism continues and it feels outdated 
because in some sense, spiritually, it is outdated. It is a remnant of, of a past, um, the, you know, the way humans have been, um, on this planet for a really long time. And to get, <clears throat> excuse me, to the next level of enlightenment, if you will, we got to get past that. We got to get past the idea that well, war can solve anything. Um, and what gives me a lot of hope, and I hope it does for you as well, is the way that the world is responding to this crisis. Because what we're finding is that um, Putin really thought that he could waltz into Ukraine, which I am convinced has been his intention all along, and that his buddy 45 would have helped um, him greatly by simply looking the other way um, if he were still in office. But of course, he is not. And that's because he lost by 7 million votes. And there wasn't enough fraud in all the kingdom to pull that one off. And so Biden, as intended by spirit <laughs> and by the people of, of the United States, by a great majority, is the rightful president. And he ain't having it. And I really get tired of hearing people complain about Biden because, in my opinion, he has played this perfectly against Putin. He knows what's at stake. He is an elder statesman. Whatever else one might feel about Biden, as an older man, his priorities are different. His, his ego is in a different spot. He is not... He's not on the upward swing of his life. He 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 knows that this is this is part of the end of his life, and that in some sense he is he is provide he is in service to our country and to humanity at this time because he has to be because it's critical for the future of the planet. It really is, and so when Putin invaded Ukraine. Biden's reaction, instead of looking the other way, or um, what a lot of people thought would happen because we pulled out of Afghanistan, people thought that Biden wouldn't react. And instead, Biden immediately engaged it and sent, um, you know, our warships to that area and immediately started talking with NATO and, um, and then with the Ukrainians. And he is not allowing us to be pulled into World War III. It is a tragedy for the Ukrainians that we cannot go in there. The United States cannot go in there at this time to assist the Ukrainians. But if we were to do so, the escalation could lead to nuclear annihilation. And there is a, a strong chance that Putin is ill, as many psychics say, and that he feels the clock running out on himself, and people who are desperate do desperate things when they feel they're running out of time. And that's how I see Putin. I see him as a desperate man who is running against the clock to try to reignite, um, to try to reform the former Soviet Union. Um, he feels it is his, his, his destiny, his legacy to um, avenge the wrongful dissolution, dissolution, breaking up of the Soviet Union. And he wants to be the historical figure who begins the reformation of the Russian Empire. But... At this point, all he is doing is leveling Ukraine. It is horrific, horrific, barbaric, um, sadistic. Yes, it's evil. It's 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 evil actions. If he if we don't want to say that he himself is evil because we don't want to give him that much credit, uh, I would say that his actions are are as close to evil as you can you can get. Because it's it's a willful infliction of suffering upon others when you know 
that you don't have to inflict that suffering. And so whatever else he may have been before, excuse me, when he committed to this invasion, he, he lost some critical bits of himself that in the afterlife and karmically, I think are going to be real hard for him to, uh, to wrestle with and 45 as well. They both, if it, if we really do have these life reviews that the psychics tell us of where you have to experience the, the pain that you've inflicted upon other people, like you have to experience everything that you've inflicted upon other people and, and the good things too. Like you, you have a life review that includes all the good and all the bad you've done essentially. Um, those two guys in particular, it ain't going to be pretty. It ain't going to be pretty, and there isn't um, anyone in the world I would rather less be. So thank God we are not them. We didn't allow ourselves to be them. It's a lot. So there's a lot of weight. There's a lot of weight that people are feeling right now. Yet, um, it as hard as it is to believe it is somehow happening as it has to happen. Like we can't get to the other side of this. Let's just call it the other side of this this river without swimming through. You know, swimming to the other side. Like, and um, what awaits the world? I think is going to be a. I really believe is going to be a rebirth. I I believe I said it in my last video that I that I feel very strongly that. We are in a prophesized end of times, the end of a major cycle, and we are seeing the worst of the worst. We are seeing the total collapse of all kinds of systems and the panic of the old masters of the old world to retain their power, which is slipping from their grasp ever more so every day that passes and, and the closer the new world comes into be manifesting essentially and that we as as light workers help to manifest it and so they their desperation is um evident and that's in the energy all around us and so everyone feels it so that i believe is also when it's even more critical to retain your hope um to to maintain your belief that that this too shall pass you know as cliche as that is that that we will get through and to be honest here in the United States we have it I mean compared to what the Ukrainians are going through there's there's no comparison at all like we've got it easy relatively speaking we're not experiencing the suffering that they um, are experiencing now um, though everyone in the world has suffered because of COVID and five six years of like autocratic like um aggression globally and like and this feeling that the uh autocrats including trump were gonna win and the f all the fear that we felt as a result of that and yet needing to believe that only the light could win and can win and will win because it always does but it's just time that is the variable which is what makes things so frustrating because the light always wins. It just does. But what darkness does is tries to delay the inevitable and therefore um, further the suffering, to stretch out the suffering. So in, in our minds, it's so important to not embrace that suffering, to not put the suffering into your heart. That's different than feeling empathy. I feel, I feel tremendous empathy for the Ukrainians for Zelensky, I pray for him pretty much daily. I'm sure um, a lot of you do too. Um, I do believe that he is being divinely protected in some sense. Um, and I I just, I so hope that he um, makes it through safely um, through this perilous time because he is a very brave man and he will be a historical hero and he is a symbol of hope 
in in darkness he is a beacon of light any cliche you want to throw at that um and um he is doing what he was meant meant to do what he was born to do just as we all are in a, in a sense um it's quite incredible the way things unfold really so um all of this to say in a long-winded way as you know i uh, often am that it's going to it's going to be okay we're going to get to the other side as i said before the world is not going to end the world is going to be reborn and the better world is on the way and we already at least here in the united states we got through our hardest part already because we got rid of 45 and that was part of our trial by fire and unfortunately it appears that this Ukrainian, this war in Ukraine is, I hope, one of the last, one of the last major events we have to experience as a collective, and especially for the Ukrainians, that it be over as soon as it can be. Um, you know, I pray for it daily, but I just, I just have a feeling it's going to be at least months. I don't know. I don't know. I want it to be sooner. Um, because I don't see the point in this suffer in this suffering, but I don't see the whole picture the way sp spirit does. So somehow we have to trust that that this is how it has to be. Somehow, even that's even though that's hard to accept. So, and I hope that this is like kind of the last gasp of the of those old old bad energies. So those old yeah patriarchal uh, the negative side of of. Patriar of patriarchal energy you know male energy and fe the divine masculine energy and the divine feminine ma energy are both really important like you really you can't at least in this realm you can't really have one without the other so it's not that um like i i don't i don't love that phrase toxic masculinity i don't, I don't care for it because women can be toxic too um there are toxic people and there are people who are, you know, natural born healers of both genders. But that said, in, in the case of Putin, it is it is a old patriarchal energy that is um, spinning and, and um, winding its way down the drain, basically. And um, he's going to kick and scream like a child on his way down the drain. And... Um, you know, he may even think he can take others down with him, but it's not going to turn out that way. The world isn't isn't going down for this man. No, it's just not going to happen. Um, we're going to prevail through this, um, and and God willing, um, the Ukrainians will be able to get the Russians out of their land soon. So there's all that. Um, I'm going to pause for a minute because I got some tissues over here, and I'm going to try to not be. Um, disgusting so pardon me my poor runny nose uh, uh yeah pardon me i mean basically it's it's lovely my nose runs basically 24 hours a day so that's uh that's a lot of fun uh, <laughs> allergies uh, i'm allergic i must be allergic allergic to everything um so okay so let's talk about Let's talk about some dreams. Um, I had a, I had a couple interesting ones last night. I haven't been dreaming as much. Well, I, I feel like I've been dreaming as much lately. But I tried to describe this in the last video, and I and I hear some of the psychics talking about it too. But it seems to me like up until now, you know, like let's just, let's just use levels just as an exam sort of an example. But if earth is at this level and let's say dreaming is more like at this level and dreaming is the formless and it's about possibilities and manifestation and maybe it's even has to do with just how quantum physics works in the universe and like this is down here our physical plane. It feels to me like these two are coming ever closer together. And that we are learning to be manifestors. And that comes from our thoughts and our intentions and what we put out into the world. 
as as what we want from the, from the world or how we want the world to be, especially when it's from our highest intentions, our highest vibrations. So um, for me, it's almost like dreams and reality are coming closer together. There's not as much of a distinction between the two of them, almost, it feels like sometimes. And so it seems like, and, and that's what I'm seeing in my life right now. Like I'm working on a lot of creative projects, which I won't get into at the moment, but they include the book, uh, the next book. And um, they're all, they all feel like they're getting me closer to dreams, you know, dreams I've had. And, I, and I, now I don't mean sleeping dreams. I mean like the dreams I've had about how my life would turn out or what my future will hold. And I can't be sure, but I feel like um, if more of the things that I had hoped to see come around into, and, and come into my life in, at this stage of my life... Um, it feels they have, they feel more tangible now, more like closer as if they've, they've dropped, not dropped, but if, as if they've actually, you know, the, that, those dream, that dream realm and the reality and physical reality are blending a little more. And so what's up here can mix with what's down here. And, um, I would, I wonder what anyone would have to say about that. Um, and of course, you know, sometimes when I have dreams that are, end up being, somewhat predictive that to me is a reminder that I'm plugged in in some way to the universe in a way that I don't totally understand but I'm be beginning to feel like I understand and when the book next book eventually comes out I don't want to spoil it but um like I've said before all of my dreams from 2021 kind of all relate to each other when you step back and look at them. And so they form the end of the book. And what ends up emerging is that it seems to me I've been dreaming of the future <laughs> in some sense, like for a long time. And um, um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder about my own origins um, based on some information I've got from some readings with, um, psychics. I feel drawn to the, I've always felt drawn to the stars and, um, I don't know if I'm from here, so to speak. Um, I might, I might be, <laughs> maybe I'm from, from Lyra, the harp galaxy. Um, and, um, because of the way I feel drawn to it and because of, some other events which are described in the book, but I can't say for sure. But I don't know if um, I feel like maybe I've I've definitely had lives on other planets and um, as other types of intelligent life, I guess, and uh, perhaps um, some of those planets were more um, evolved cultures. I mean, one can only hope, and that being here now is part of um, trying to help raise um, the vibration on, on earth. I would like to believe that I'm doing that. I, I would like to believe that most of the people watching this are, are doing that because that's, that's the spiritual community, right? That's the light worker community as we call it. So anyway, um, a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine is in uh, England right now. I think he's actually in London and he, um, He's a musician, and he he's played drums on a lot on the last bunch of my CDs. His name is Eric Starr, and he texted me a couple days ago about a hotel that he's been staying at that has like some funny energy to it, some funny juju. I guess it's a very old hotel, and they may have even given him a heads up that it that it is a bit um, known for its um, um, uh, you know maybe. Maybe there are spirits in this place. And so what I said to him um, in a text was that, okay, well, I'm going to send you some white light protection, you know, just and do your own and try to put some good juju around you. But also, like, try, like my advice to him was to try not to, um, 
lean into that energy or to be too curious about that energy, especially if it's bad juju, because your curiosity is kind of what they depend on for their strength, for their energy. And again, this is a, another example of like how what we put out, it comes back to us like energetically. So let's just say you were in a space that just felt like it had funk, funky energy in it. And you thought maybe even, you know, um, unfriendly spirits or something like that. Well, you, the last thing you want to do is feed it with your, your interest in your, and or your fear. You want to deprive it of that energy. So I just said to him, you know, pay it no mind and you'll, and you'll be fine. And I, now I haven't heard from him a couple of days, but of course last night I dreamt that, um, I was staying in an old weird hotel and in the dream, the hotel had, was expensive and it had like a, repu a reputation um, as being a classic hotel, yet it was a dump and like everything about it felt wrong to me. I was just like, and the room looked weird and the, and the service was terrible and I was just thinking how if I was staying at the cheaper hotel not a cheap, a cheap, cheap hotel, but like the less expensive hotel, how that would have been better and just fine and more than enough. Cause you know, this is always the thing. They, they, they try to sell you these um, expensive places sometimes or expensive anything. And sometimes it's just all smoke and mirrors. You can get, you can get just as, as good a version of the same thing for a lot less money, but it's, they're, they're, they're selling you the reputation more than they're selling you a real thing which is basically the last president in a nutshell. You know, his, his entire fake gold, uh, you know, fortress and, or not fortress, but, you know, his entire fake gold empire in New York with his buildings and stuff. Like, it's all, it, it hides the rot. <laughs> or the gold is fake, you know, in and of itself. Um, it's a facade. So that's how this dream was. Like, this hotel... Um, was just like, excuse me, like, wow, this is a dump. And then I wondered if I was dreaming about my friend's hotel, Eric's hotel. So I texted him about this, um, last night or today, but I haven't heard back from him yet. So I hope he'll fill me in. So that was one. And then the other dream I had last night, I had to write it down because it, it came to me so fast, um, and quick. So yeah, fast and quick, uh huh. So fast and brief, and it was brief that um, when I woke up, I knew that if I didn't write it down, it would get away from me. So this is what I wrote down um, when I woke up, and then before I went back to sleep, um, I had a dream about twenty states in the United States that wanted to leave the union, and that a movement began with one or two red states like Florida and or Texas. And that in the dream, these states actually did secede from the United States, um, at least one of them and maybe two. And they're the ones that right now are, are you know, passing all these stupid, stupid draconian laws like that are more like the autocratic, you know, uh, nonsense that... 45 was trying to inflict upon the whole country in which Putin represents um, in its in his entirety, you know, uh, like regarding abortion and, and transgender rights and gay rights and this whole don't say gay thing in Florida. And then I th bill that they passed, which is moronic. And I think Florida just also passed a bill about um, that they have a like state... Um, election police or something that they just passed like i don't even know if this stuff is legal but they're trying they're trying to they're trying to fix they're trying to fix the next election by changing their little states into little autocratic countries of their own and they're gonna they're gonna fail but um they just will not give it up yet and it's so tiresome and I always think of Florida and Texas. And then, like, having been to Florida, whew, there are some dumb people down there. Damn. I mean, I'm sure there's some smart people down there. No offense if you're from Florida. But, damn, there are some dumb people down there. And um, and my 
aunt and uncle are down there half the year, and they were like the biggest Rush Limbaugh fans uh, in town, and I'm sure they would never see this video, so it's not like I'm insulting them to their face. Um, but um, it makes sense that they go down there because they're not real bright either. I know that's mean. What can I say? Actually, my uncle is smart in business, but he's dumb in life. <sighs> Whatever. What can you say? Anyway, I've, di I've diverted again. So in the dream, there was like a movement. 20 states in, in the country wanted, and as there probably are about 20 like reddish states in the United States right now. They want us to leave and basically declare their independence from the United States. And one or two states did it. And then it stopped after that in my dream. Um, oh, and I wrote here, it stopped after those two states, but the idea of going to visit Florida or Texas as little red dystopian semi-dictatorships was um, not uh, inviting. And then I thought in the dream, well, that's just how it is in the future. So the people living here, and the rest of the United States will just have to deal with it, and life will go on somehow. So if that turns out to be in any way predictive, wow, that'll be weird. I mean, I wouldn't doubt, um, I wouldn't be shocked if Florida and Texas decided to try to leave the Union. I mean, their laws are, are kind of a separation anyway right now, what they're trying to pass. So that was the dream. Um, it only took me 36 and a half minutes to get to it as, as usual. So I will wrap up because I'm long overdue. I always uh, talk longer than I intend, but I'm a chatty Kathy, as you know. And um, I hope everybody's doing okay. Um, really try to hang in there. Try to Try to keep your energy up in whatever way works for you personally. You know, for me... I find um, I got to get my workouts in. A couple workouts a week are critical to my well-being. Um, I spent time with my brother today. Um, we watched the Buffalo Sabres hockey game, and even though the team has had a pretty bad season, they've had two really good games in a row, and um, we had a lot of fun and laughs. And um, I had a gig last night, and I sang very well. And um, was really happy with my voice. It has recovered from, from all the problems I was having last summer. And I'm hopeful that uh, these, these salt rinses that I do now every day are making a, a difference and will help me to not have another uh, sort of vocal issue this, this summer when, when allergy season begins. And, um, and just getting through the, the shingles <laughs> vaccination, um, feeling better from that pretty much beginning well yesterday um so now my energy is kind of coming back up and um so i hope um and listen listening to music and writing more music um has been very um helpful to me and so this is like encouragement to to you if you need it maybe you don't to you know do do the things that that lift you um to 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 spend time with the people who lift you and to put as much of your energy there as you can as we collectively you know try to to try to get through what's going on in the world and as we continue to pray that peace comes to Ukraine and um, that Zelensky be protected and that the world be essentially saved so yes I'm going to continue to pray for Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump God help me so here we go. God bless. <laughs> God bless Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump. May they rediscover their souls. May they rediscover their souls. May they see the light. Truly. And um, may they change course. Um, change course. Because it's never too late to change. Although... Their ability to change is, um, yeah, uh, yeah, enough said. You understand. Okay, so that's it for me. Um, thanks very much for checking out this video. Now I got to say the five things. Um, let's see. 
So please remember to like the video if, if you liked it. I mean, don't mean thumbs down. I mean thumbs up. Like the video if you liked it. Like, share, subscribe. And if you share and subscribe, if you if you tell other people about me, and I finally, if I ever get to 1,000 people, I mean, I'm really far away. But it's only 1,000 people. Then I could do lives. I could do lives. And I could post on the community page. Um, so, hey. If you wanna if you wanna help me get there, help me get there. If you don't, then then you don't have to. So like, share, subscribe, comment. His commenting is fun, and um, oh, uh, hit the bell, whatever the hell the bell is. <laughs> I think it's for more instant notifications. Or you know what? I don't even know. Who cares? No, I'm supposed to say it. All right, so that's my spiel. Oh, and you can support my uh, creative efforts if you like. Um, if you go to robfalgiano.com, I have 10 CDs, um, many of which are available for sale on the website and my book, uh, my first book, as I work on the second. And you can support my um, creative work that way if you would like to. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Be well. Take care. Bless you. Bless everybody in your life. Bless all those great, great people in the world. Um, doing doing the the hard work of just being decent every day um it's not as hard once you keep doing it but sometimes it's hard okay take care be well